Hi there, welcome, welcome. Come in and get yourself a hot cup of tea. There's nothing like a good cup of tea to just slow you down, relax a little bit because I'm convinced that you're going to want to hear what's happening on this program today. Uh, but if you've never seen homekeepers before, welcome, welcome, welcome. Just don't let it be your last time at all. It's a joy to come to you and to bring you some really good information every day. And it's amazing how the Lord sends us those kind of people. And uh, he's done that again today. If you saw the last program, Carol Sewell was on. She's an author. And the Lord laid on her heart the, uh, the importance of Christians, you know, being involved in our government, being good citizens. And uh, she's written a couple books. Uh, we talked about one yesterday, uh, what were they thinking? And that w dealt with the um, founding fathers, what was really in their mind when this nation was birthed. Today, I'm going to talk about her book, Gatekeeper. And I love that term. I really believe with all my heart, if every home in America had a gatekeeper there, it would be a different nation. Keeping out evil, keep out pornography, keep out everything that is degrading to the human being and keep those things inside that are uplifting. Also, government oversight and individual rights. This is probably something your kids are not learning in school at all, and it's important that they know that. And also, in just a second, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Stephanie and Tiffany Hostorf. She is um, co-owner of uh, Nook and Cranny. She's been on before. And they're going to do a pumpkin stand-up sign. This is some kind of a craft. And I'm anxious to see it because I haven't seen it myself. But before I do that, let me remind you and gently nudge you about supporting the program. We are viewer supported. And I've often thought, because I'm, I'm a giver. I'm just not bashful about that. I'm a giver, a regular giver. The Bible says give and it should be given unto you. It's true. It's just absolutely true. And what I want to just help you understand is when the Spirit nudges you to give to a ministry, go ahead and do it because uh, there's a reason that it's happening and it's for your ultimate blessing. So if you can send a donation to this program, you can send a check to Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Or that 800 number is for those of you who like to use your credit card or debit card, 1-800-229-0059. And whatever in the world you can do, my friend, large or small, we are so, so appreciative of it. And thank you so much. And now I'm going to send it over to Stephanie and Tiffany and see what they come up with. This is going to be new to me, too. I am so happy and excited to have Tiffany back from Nook and Cranny. We're hoping she's going to be able to come by once a month and maybe teach us something new. And last time I made a big faux pas and I said she's going to teach us crafts, but it's so much more than that. It's <laughs> projects. It's so much more than crafts. So sorry for my faux pas. Oh, you are no. totally fine. <laughs> so show us what you have. How do we make it? Where do we get it? What do we do? Well, um, this month is our October Take and Make Kit project, mm -hmm. and we thought we'd do something that we could use for Halloween and then carry it over to Thanksgiving. So we came up with these uh, wood pumpkins, and we are going to be selling the kits, which you'll get two different sizes, but this is something that somebody can go to a craft store, Michael's, you can get some reclaimed wood. If you can't cut out a pumpkin, you can draw a pumpkin yourself. They have traceable things that you can get, all kinds of possibilities. So you don't have to actually use a pumpkin cutout, right. um, but we will have these in our kits. And we're gonna have two different sizes. It's gonna, be, it's gonna come unfinished, and in all of our kits, we're gonna supply the colors of the paint that you'll see. We always have sandpaper, sponges, a paintbrush, some fancy little embellishes, and then what really makes it stand out are gonna be our stencils. And again, like we said last time, you can get stencils at craft stores. Um, I love it when people use freehand yeah. and, and they really get yeah. creative. No, no. But, but I've, I'm not I've tried freehand I'm, and it ain't pretty. <laughs> I'm the same way, which is why that we do these stencils. So yeah. we will provide yeah. these stencils. Um, today we're gonna to be doing the give thanks ones mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. These are freestanding, um, so that you can put them on your mantle. They're so cute. And it's so exciting because if you're in Pinellas County, you can get all of this. It's everything. 
everything you need, which I love. Yes. Then you, you don't have to go it, to the craft store and pick up this and pick up that. This is everything you absolutely need if you're in Pinellas County. You'll get the information at the end, but yes. I'm just excited about yes. that. Yes, so we'll have it all in there for you. We're going to have two different options, the give thanks option or the pumpkin option, the jack-o'-lantern option. And this one my kids actually made with mm -hmm. me sitting on the floor at home. So it's a great way because you know our workshops are adults only. Mm -hmm. It's a great way for you to get your family involved get at home. Get your kids involved. They love it. They, my kids beg me all the time, <laughs> can we paint, can we paint? We use latex paint, Sherwin-Williams. You can use any kind of craft paint. It doesn't really matter. Um, I'm picky with my kids because they get it all over themselves. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I try to use a, a different kind of craft paint. But anyway, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna paint this entire thing orange. And I've already done one here for you so that we can get the process started, but it's going to come unfinished. I like to sand first mm -hmm. to just kind of get the wood, excuse me, the wood not so rough, mm -hmm. and this just kind of gets the process started. So you're going to sand over your entire raw wood, and then you're going to paint the entire thing orange with the orange paint. And then the next step is to apply our stencil. And it's just like a big sticker. You're gonna I just love the stencils. Yeah, it's like really I said, I tried to freehand. We went and painted ceramics with a friend the other night, and I tried to freehand a sunflower. I mean, how hard is a sunflower? <laughs> and it was ridiculous. So the stencils are so fabulous. They really are. They really are. I cannot draw a stick figure. Yeah. I'm just terrible. So this really that. makes life so much easier. So and it looks so professional. It really done. does. People are really surprised when they come to our workshops that they made this because it looks like something that they bought in a store. Oh, sure. I have the... Um, the, uh, uh, it is well with my soul palette in uh -huh. my si in my living room, and someone was like, "You made that?" They were shocked. Yeah, and I'm like I made it you, with my I own hands. I made it. I hands. totally made it. It's so empowering when you come it in and you make something, it's and then so especially when and now you're getting you. more and more into power tools. And oh yes, we've the whole place is stocked with power tools. So what you're going to do next is take your um, accent color, which in this case we're using brown, and you're just going to dab it all over your stencil here. And Mitch, just make sure you're going over your letters. Mm -hmm. Do you yeah. look back at your first, because um, it was like a Pinterest workshop that it was a very first we did it Do you look back at that and just go, oh my gosh, how I kinda, far have we come? I kind of cringe. I feel bad. <laughs> it was 2013 we did it, and it was a blast, and everybody loved it. But I look back at how far we've come and what we're doing like now. so far. You've it's, come it's so a, amazing, far. It's amazing. It's amazing. A huge amazing. difference. So I'm you, always excited every time I see an updated post of something new that you guys are doing. It's well, with, so exciting. With Pinterest these days, the possibilities are endless. So we use that for a lot of inspiration and for our And some people want to do all that stuff, but to go out and to purchase everything you need to do some of this stuff, it's, it's just not labor it's, intensive and expensive. It's not reasonable. Yeah, that's the and thing. And your prices are so Well, and that's why reasonable. we started our workshops. Yes. Just, but this is great for people to be able to do at home. So you just basically take the paint, you dab it on over your stencil, and you can get these kind of stencils at the store, maybe not this exact one. Mm -hmm. And then you peel the stencil off. And this one actually has little insides here. Mm -hmm. I'm use my handy dandy fingernails. And like she said, you you know, this is what comes in the kit, but you could use, I mean, orange for the pumpkin, of course, but if you wanted to do different colors, you could easily do different colors exactly. too. And, um, and then you just embellish it with some lace, some ribbon. We've got some burlap that'll be included. Tie it to the top and this kind of makes it just a little fancier. And then at the end, and they have, they'll have they have little stands on yes, the Yes, this one doesn't have it. And these yeah. stands, actually, I didn't have the stands at home with me, so these are kind of it's kind of rigged together, but our stands will be on oh, the back. Oh, if you could see the back of them. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at the back of these. So then you would do the give, and then you would... And then and you would repeat the same process with, right, the with the thanks on the other pumpkin. And then you've got your give thanks or your jack-o'-lantern, and they're perfect for the holidays. That is so great. Is that so much fun? It's so exciting to me. I just love making stuff. It's, yeah, it's amazing how you can just transform a boring piece of wood Boy, into yes, something like that. Yes, and you that's did it. And that's I what's did. So fun it was about so it. exciting. <laughs> so her information is coming up on the screen. We're so excited to have her. If you have any questions, you can Facebook me. You can message her. We're so happy to have you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so and much we'll for having me. We'll see you next good. month. Sounds good. Okay. We'll see you later. I love watching those girls, and let me tell you something. There's something about crafts. There's something about working with your hands, with a friend or with your child, that makes lifetime memories. It, I guess it's the connection from here to here, but uh, it's time well spent, especially with your, um, your children, grandchildren. 
Um, Carol, welcome back. I was just going to tell the audience, I got these little, uh, you, they're little tiny things to bake a cake in, like a, like a cupcake, but they're shaped like Christmas trees. And I'm going to send them to two of my um, great granddaughters because I know that my daughter-in-law will help them. Um, and I just think this kind of thing is really important. It, it goes along with everything we try to say about the home. It does. It's it does. Where it happens. Welcome back. Thank you. I loved the program yesterday. With you, there's just not enough time. Well, I know. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> let's go back over, uh, maybe this is the first time a lot of people are seeing you. Um, you're a good Christian, minding your own business, and uh, God lays it on your heart to write some books about the Christian's place in government. And on the last program, we discussed um, what were they thinking. And the they uh, were the founding fathers. And um, I urge you to get that book, not just for yourself, but for your church leaders and all. We really need to get the church back into governments, it will change things. I wonder where we got the idea that, okay, politics, government, that's all dirty and we are spiritual people. And so we're not only letting the world go to hell, we're, we're changing our nation, which is gonna damage our generations following us. Some of that started during uh, uh, the 30s, during the depression when the federal government stepped in and started uh, doing charitable mm -hmm. giving and helping people. Oh, and look at today. <laughs> right, right, never ends. Uh -huh. uh, and so some of it started there. Then the churches who were actually doing that before kind of pulled back. So there are little key things that happened along the way mm -hmm. that caused the church to pull back and some of it is just wrong theology mm -hmm. and things like that, the way they're thinking about it. Yeah, and, and so, um, yeah. I think we'll get your website up. We're gonna leave it up the rest of the program and I hope you'll take time to write it down because as we're talking about her books, I'm pretty sure you would want to get them and I highly recommend the one we talked about already, uh, What Were They Thinking? And that, that was the foundation right there. And so then we can follow through what's happened since. And David Barton um, forwarded your last book, and he is just kind of the premier person in uh, the Christian's place in our history. He's dug out things that no one knew, I, really. Yeah. So that's a real compliment to you. It, it is. It, Let's talk about that last book just a little bit. Um, have, the, have you had open doors to get into churches and into believers groups to kind of get the message out? Uh, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard because uh -huh. I'm not a big name person mm -hmm. and so churches don't know who I am and so they're naturally, and my topic is such right. that, however, uh, it's much easier to have me come in and mm -hmm. address these things than, ha than for the pastor to do it mm -hmm. because I'm like an evangelist. Yeah. I can come in and, you know, yeah. knock it out. And, mm -hmm. and uh, if I offend somebody, well, sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> ask for mercy mm -hmm. and leave. Mm -hmm. And uh, then, but the pastor that way doesn't have to be the one to. And you've put your truth. time in. Yes. Uh, learning the subject matter. And uh, so it'd be a good thing. Websites on the screen and to come and talk to a ladies group or a youth group or anything uh, is very, very important. Okay, I want to talk about gatekeeper, which is one of my all-time favorite words. Mm -hmm. I think it is so full of meaning and our homes need gatekeepers. They do. They do. A lot of them don't have fathers in them. And I know. The father's supposed to be the gatekeeper and the protector, but God can use mamas to do that too. That's true. That's true. So what is this book? This book Gatekeeper uh, 101 is a study that I wrote starting in January and it, it turned into it was a, it's a 16 week. I had no idea how long it was mm -hmm. going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it was it was done uh, for uh, I launched a new thing in Texas called the Texas Honor Project. 
And the Lord showed me that part of the reason why we have trouble keeping good people in elected office is that they, the Christians that we elect that start out so good and uh, but then within four terms or so they, they go off the pathway and it's mm -hmm. like, oh wow, what happened? Mm -hmm. And uh, so I was concerned for our Christian representatives. In my, in my county, every one of our elected state representatives are born again Christians who are very principled in how they make decisions. And I was... How did that happen? Oh, well, <laughs> we... <laughs> you worked at it, right? Yes, we worked at it. We worked at it very hard. And, uh, and they are awesome, and they do a good job, but, they've all, but they're young. And they've, they've been in there for one, two terms, uh, a couple of them, maybe three terms. And so it's like, okay, you know, they need something. What is it? And so the Lord said, they just... He, he gave me... How shall a young man keep his way pure? Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's the honor project is just a matter of coming alongside these representatives and uh, encouraging them in the Lord. So I'm like a lobbyist, only I'm not. You're a God's lobbyist. I'm God's lobbyist. Yeah. So it's all about them and their relationship and keeping it pure. That's good. That's so really that's good. all it's about. And I got then, some information on yes. this. That's and you can get this through the website. This is uh, Texas, but it can happen anywhere. I think it's a marvelous idea. And you keep reminding them. Yes. I you know, just, we I sent keep, you there. That's we right. We send you home. Yes. <laughs> and so I, I gave them, I did little cards, uh, tent cards mm -hmm. that they put on their desk that to remind them. And it's oh, like good. that picture of the baby mm -hmm. in the Capitol mm -hmm. is that... It's all about the generations yeah. and that when they vote on legislation, it impacts the generations. Mm -hmm. Everything we do impacts the generations mm -hmm. and what legacy are we leaving? Mm -hmm. So I, I put a little card that says, will my great grandchildren bless me or curse me? Yeah. <laughs> to remind them a good, what they're good question. thinking out. And then I wrote this study for their staff because they all hire young Christian staff that are mm -hmm. interns still in college. Some of them just graduated. Some are getting ready to go to law school. And so they do this for uh, a semester, essentially, uh, because in Texas mm -hmm. we have a part-time legislature and they meet uh, for about five months, five and a half months, uh, every other year. And so it's a, it's a marathon and it's very hectic. Mm -hmm. And so that's how this came about. It's interesting. Uh, this is your city council? No, this is the state, state, state representatives. Um, President Eisenhower once said, all politics is grassroots. It is. And uh, we usually think of the White House, which is very important, uh, but also um, just those people that you right. vote on and you might not even know. That's it's, something that bothers me. People are on there that I don't know anything about them. I know. So I, I don't vote, I don't say anything. Yeah. Another thing that bothers me, and I don't know what to do about it, is when you vote for a judge, you really don't know much about them. You don't even know what party they're in. And um, I'm trying to, I vote absentee, mm -hmm. and it really gives you a chance to read that ballot thoroughly mm -hmm. and yes. determine. Yeah, but yeah, judges are the most difficult, mm -hmm. I think. Unless, like in Texas, they run as a Republican or a Democrat. Mm -hmm. But in other states, they yeah. don't, and so you have to you have to research mm -hmm. and find out what are they registered. What's and their, what are and some of their associations? Some of the things they've yeah. done. Yes, and if if they have a track record as a as mm -hmm. a judge before, then you mm -hmm. look at how they've ruled mm -hmm. on things, mm -hmm. and that gives you a big clue. Uh, it, it also gives you a clue as to what groups they belong to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that will tell you a lot. That will tell you a lot right there. So that book is Gatekeeper 101. And yeah. to all you homekeepers out there, I hope you interchange those words, homekeeper or gatekeeper. There's so much that comes in through the Internet, through their cell phones, and all, somebody's got to be on right. top of it. Because this lays out the foundations that are necessary mm -hmm. for us to have liberty. Mm -hmm. And they're all things that are applied to our lives. Uh, whether and wherever you work, mm -hmm. it's 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 all about the thinking mm -hmm. and getting these principles down in them. So I was planting a seed in these young people, 
and then at the end, excellent. and it was done by email. Mm -hmm. So at the end, I just did up the little book so that I could give them something to take with them mm -hmm. that they could use as they start families mm -hmm. to teach their children. And uh, you talk about a standard. We live in a society that has no absolutes. Feels good, do it. And you brought out something, I think it was in this book, it, I read both of them. Probably about both, the but standard. It's in this one. Yes, the standard. And in the scripture, that standard is called the plumb line. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very interesting um, story from Amos, I believe, and where God was saying, okay, they've disobeyed, I'm just going to nuke them, <laughs> basically. <laughs> and this prophet would go before God and said, please don't do that. And, and actually, he got God to relent somewhat. And finally, after all this back and forth, uh, God said, okay, I've, I've set a plumb line before you, and I will spare them no longer. That's the standard, the plumb line. And I remember several years ago, um, I visited a friend who had an arrangement of mirrors on her wall. I said, That's, I like that. She said, well, I did it myself. I said, would you help me do it? I had a wall in my bedroom. So she came over, and we got what it needed, and and uh, we we're going to install these 12 by 12 inch mirrors with some molding in between them. And so she got herself a plumb line. And we discovered yeah. that the top of my bedroom was about an inch off plumb. Oh. It's only the plumb line, it's only the standard that's going to tell you what's wrong. That's right. That's right. And truth is the standard, and God's word is truth. Mm -hmm. And that's the foundation, that's the principle number one that is the foundation of liberty. Mm -hmm. You can't have liberty without truth. Mm -hmm. Now this, uh, this other book, what is this one? What was the purpose of Government Oversight and Individual Rights? This one is a result of uh, about two years ago, it'll be two years next month, I started blogging. And I now can they find your blog through the website? Yes, okay. yes, it's on the, it's on the website. And uh, to help Christians have a better understanding of the nature of government and how things work and just to address different issues. So uh, I started out with the nature of government and how it all transpired and what it's supposed to be and, and then the founders and then the way it is. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it goes through mm -hmm. the whole thing. And then added uh, uh, oversight because we're, we're, we live right now in an administrative state where you have all these agencies that govern us mm -hmm. and they make and pass law and make rules that, they, that are in, uh, essentially laws mm -hmm. uh, that they're really not and We've never had do. more than in the last four or five years. Yes, so uh, basically what they've done is they've made us all lawbreakers. We're all criminals because there are so many of them that we, we can't keep up with them mm -hmm. and we don't know when we're breaking the law until they come knock down our door mm -hmm. with guns mm -hmm. and arrest us for some silly something. That we didn't even know. Right. So I had to actually, I, <laughs> I had to find, I knew Congress has oversight on these agencies mm -hmm. and so I had to do some research on that to find out how that went about and that didn't even happen until uh, the 19. Uh, 40s, the late 40s, when they, uh, with FDR and the New Deal and everything, they created all these agencies, and so somebody had to watch. And they thought it was a utopia. Yes, yes. So, hey, if you just join me, I'm talking to Carol Sewell. She was on the last program, and uh, we're talking about the volume of work she's done to really uh, inform Christians on their government and what they should be doing, be part of it. I mentioned before, but the last presidential election to me is a disgrace in the face of the church of the living God because there were, I believe, millions of evangelicals. These are people who believe in born again and all that good thing, never voted. And I think that's a blight on, on us as a people. And remember this, friends, you're not voting for a pastor. You're voting for the better of two people. That's what it comes down to. Maybe it's even the lesser of two evils, but let's be sure and vote for the lesser. <laughs> That's right, and, that, and let me address that just a moment because if uh, uh, most 
the majority mm -hmm. of voters, people registered who go vote regularly in the November fall elections, mm -hmm. do not vote in the primaries. And in the primary Ooh. is when you have options. Mm -hmm. I mean, just look at now how many people are running. They're all running except me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> or me or, you know, my grandson. You're, you're so quote, qualified. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it, we, we really miss it because that's when you vet them and you vote your conscience because you have the best chance of voting your conscience and for the one that will best represent you and God in, uh, and our Constitution in the primary. When you get to November, yeah. the decision has been made for you mm -hmm. and then you got this one and this one and they may, you know, like last time, mm -hmm. people didn't go vote. Yeah. Let me thank you over and over for bringing that up. That never entered my mind on the primary and there's, uh, there's quite a selection, in, really in both parties. Uh, there, are there are several people uh, and as we're making this program, in case you see it down the road in a few months, as we're making it, we're really kind of in the heat of building up uh, uh, to, the, to the primaries. Um, on the last program, you took us back to the 20s and you've mentioned the 40s and so forth. And I've watched the progression cer certainly since the 60s. I've watched it deteriorate, deteriorate deteriorate and she points out in the book that uh, we came to the point of free love if it feels good do it now let's talk about the cost of free love right the cost that's that's another foundation for liberty mm -hmm. it's understanding that every idea has an end result mm -hmm. and the end result may not be what was intended right so there were all these, well, they were sold to us as good intentions. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I, I question some of that. But well, if you know the Bible, you know they're not. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so the cost of all that has been in the increase in out-of-marriage out of births, mm -hmm. uh, the decline of family, the, the, you know, when we voted or when they yeah. instituted uh, no-fault divorce, mm -hmm. Yep. Then all of a sudden you have rampant single mothers and poverty uh, um, among that group. Yeah, and they're going to have to get the book because we're out of time. <laughs> I could talk, but the free love wasn't very free, uh, not at all. That's that's the way Satan works. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's going to be a payday for sure. Uh, please go on her website and get a lot of information and join me next time. Remember, there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper, none whatsoever. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.